Good morning. We begin with our opening hymn. Beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent sufferings and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He has sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority... I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who here offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Our second lesson this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and have all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I give up my body that I may be burned, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not brag. It is not arrogant, it does not behave indecently. It is not selfish, it is not irritable. It does not keep a record of wrongs. It does not rejoice over unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never comes to an end. But if there is prophetic gifts, they will be done away with. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be done away with. For known only in a part, and we prophesy only in part. But when that which is complete has come, that which is partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see indirectly using the mirror. But then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I was fully known. So now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Be Please stand for the reading of the gospel. By the mercies of the Lord, we are not consumed, for his compassions do not fail. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to 43. He took the twelve aside and said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. Indeed, he will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, mistreat him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. They did not understand any of these things. What he said was hidden from them, and they did not understand what was said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man sat by the road begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were at the front of the crowd rebuked him, telling him to be quiet. But he kept calling out the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and began, began following Jesus, glorifying God. All the people, when they saw this, gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We'll sing the hymn of the day.
he took the twelve aside and said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. Indeed, he will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, mistreat him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. They did not understand any of these things. What he said was hidden from them, and they did not understand what was said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man by the road begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus, the Nazarene, was passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were at the front of the crowd rebuked him, telling him to be quiet, but kept calling out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, I asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and began following Jesus, glorifying God. All the people, when they saw this, gave praise to God. Blessed be the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. As we approach ever nearer to the season of Lent, I begin to think about those uniquely characteristic aspects of this season. We see the glory and the liturgy go away for a little while. We stop singing and saying hallelujah as we anticipate Easter. We will see in the unique purple or violet color in the banners and the pyramids around the sanctuary. And the hymns that follow those characteristics, Lenten hymns, that we know so well, almost distinct as our Christmas hymns, there will always be certain times that we meet associate the season of Lent. One of those hymns that I'm looking forward to singing is that Wednesday evening precursor of the gospel readings, Jesus, I will ponder now. But as we stand on the cusp of another Lenten season, I can't help but think of praying the first stanza that describes what we're about to do every Wednesday evening. Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. With your spirit, me and Dow, for such meditation. Grant that I, in love and faith, may the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death that I will not perish. In that opening hymn stanza, which is actually a prayer of Jesus asking us to give us his holy... think about Jesus passion well certainly we understand that it is the word of God that we are thinking about and so we need the Holy Spirit to think about it properly but does that mean as an improper way to consider Jesus passion his suffering and death is there a way for us to abuse it or at least under misunderstand it this morning I want us to reconsider how on our salvation. Listen to how he describes the disciples before any of it comes to pass.
His entire being was bent toward our salvation. He was determined to go to the cross for our salvation. His eyes were set on it. And that wasn't something Jesus decided to do at the last minute. God didn't come up with that plan on a whim. It wasn't a last-ditch effort or just maybe save mankind when all else failed. No. Jesus shows the preparation that had been made for centuries by the prophecies of his faithful prophets for years. Jesus was determined to go through with this. But what do you see from the disciples? They did not understand any of these things. What he said was hidden from them, and they did not understand what he said. There was a natural spiritual blindness that kept the disciples from grasping the clarity of the gospel. We see it, we see it clearly, don't we? We look back after Jesus has already died and risen, and we know exactly what he was talking about. We have his details. But the disciples hadn't lived it yet. But it wasn't just the disciples. It was Christ. They didn't know what to do with the prospects of Jesus being the Christ, suffering his death and humiliation. They needed to pray the hymn we talked about that asked the Holy Spirit to guide us in our pondering of Jesus' passion. They missed the salvation that Jesus came to win for them through his death on the cross. Dear friends, just because we have 2,000 years removed from Jesus' death and resurrection, don't be fooled into thinking that the same thing can't happen to us. Consider how we often ponder Jesus' death. Do you consider Lent a sad season? Is it a depressing time of year for you? If so, why is that? Is it because of your sin? Or is it because of Jesus' suffering and death? Is it because you love to feel bad for what you've done? Because maybe, just maybe, we feel bad enough, then Jesus might take notice and forgive us. Maybe that seems a little far-fetched. But consider how you prepare for the Lord's Supper as an example of what I'm talking about. Paul tells us to examine ourselves before we partake of Christ's body and blood for forgiveness. He tells us to be worthy participants of the Lord's Supper. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean that we have to feel guilty enough before we come forward? Does it mean that we really have to wrench the screws into our heart, so to speak, and to make our repentance hurt before we can really be forgiven? Dear friends, I think it's a common misunderstanding of what repentance is. It turns repentance into something that we do in order to be in the right state of mind and to receive forgiveness. It puts the onus on us to be prepared to receive forgiveness as though if we don't repent the right way, we don't have that forgiveness. I think we can fall into that mentality about the season of Lent also. It is a season of repentance, and there will be sorrow and sadness as we consider our sin. As that farewell to Alleluia song says, Alleluia cannot always be our joyful hymn of praise. This side of heaven, we do still repent of our sins. But the moment repentance becomes this quota or work-based prerequisite before we are worthy to receive forgiveness, or maybe even a better way to say it is that we somehow have achieved an unworthiness enough to merit Jesus' mercy, if that's what repentance is, then we've missed the point. We aren't focused on Christ's forgiveness. We are focused instead on our own worthiness. And do we run that risk if we give something up for Lent or fast in such a way as though it makes us feel more guilty to be more worthy to receive forgiveness? It's a tricky thing to ponder the passion of Christ. We want our eyes fixed precisely where Jesus fixed his own eyes, on our salvation and our forgiveness through the cross. So consider what Jesus did. He marched willfully to Jerusalem for you, for me, and on the way, as we examine our text further, we see Jesus display his power and ability to remove blindness. He meets a man on that road. We know his name in other Gospels as Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind. 
but he knew about Jesus and he knew him as the son of David who would have mercy on his people. So then when Jesus of Nazareth came through his town, Barmaeus couldn't help but plead to God for mercy. Son of David, have mercy on me. Barmaeus knew he wasn't worthy of Jesus' time or mercy. He, Barmaeus, put his trust not in how guilty he felt or how great he thought he need, his need was. In fact, those around him saw this blind man and told him to stop bothering Jesus. Stop crying out. He doesn't have time for you. Why should he take notice of you? Maybe they didn't think Bartimaeus' situation was as bad as, they, as he thought it was. But Bartimaeus put all this aside because he knew Jesus and who he was. His eyes of faith were fixed on his salvation. That's why he called out, Jesus, son of David. He knew Jesus as the Savior who would come. And the object of such faith did not disappoint. Jesus never disappoints. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has served you. Immediately he received his sight and began following Jesus, glorifying God. All the people that saw this gave praise to God. Jesus did have the power to restore the man's physical sight. But that wasn't all Bartimaeus received. He trusted Jesus to forgive his sins. And Jesus did just that. This man's faith saved him. The Holy Spirit gave him eyes of faith, fixed on the Savior, who would restore his physical sight, even as he restored his spiritual sight to see clearly that Jesus and Jesus alone would accomplish his salvation by going to the cross. It didn't take more pity. It didn't take extra amount of worthiness or depression or sadness on Barnabas' part in order to get Jesus to take notice of him. No. All it took was Jesus alone and his will to save. And that was where Bartimaeus focused the whole time. It was clearly on Jesus and Jesus' will to save him. Dear friends, that's exactly where our focus will be this Lenten season. Yes, it will involve repentance. Yes, it will involve sorrow over our sin. But when we gaze at we, what Jesus did for us, his suffering and death through his passion, we recognize it as something now that we sorrow over, but we are overjoyed to see again. Isn't that the point of the Lenten hymns? They focus on why we treasure them. That's why we celebrate them again. That's why we meditate on them constantly. That's what we're asking for the Lenten hymn, Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion with your spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I in love and faith may thy image cherish not cry over or weep over or get saddened about, but cherish as a treasure of your suffering, pain, and death that I may not perish. And dear friends, that's not unique to that one hymn. That's the way our Lenten hymns speak. O sacred head now wounded with grief and shame wear down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns your only crown. O sacred head no glory, now from your face to shine, yet though despised and gory, I joy to call you mine. Dear friends, it's nothing but pure joy to see and celebrate again how our salvation was won by Jesus' suffering and death. A dampened and different kind of celebration, yes, but a celebration all the same, and one that brightens us in joy. Or how about the beautiful Lenten choral? Christ, the life of all the living, Christ, the death of death, our foe, who thyself for me once giving to the darkest depths of woe. Through thy suffering, death, and merit, I eternal life inherit. And then it ends with how every other stanza of him ends in the pure joy as we declare. Thousand, thousand thanks, thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee. You see, dear friends, 
That's what Jesus' passion leads us to do. It leads us to shout to God in pure joy and thanksgiving for his acts of winning our salvation. It's precisely why the Lamb of God who sits in the center of the throne in heaven in the book of Revelation still bears his wounds visibly. His cross and death and resurrection are joy, our prize, our most treasured blessing. So may God grant us this Lent, the Holy Spirit, to ponder properly Jesus' passion as we joy to look again, eyes fixed on Jesus our Savior, at how he won salvation for us. Amen. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way, that the Lord be with you all. Amen. Please stand for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. them with love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love and each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
Gracious God, you govern and direct all things and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and all places give you thanks, O Lord, our Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lived among us as human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join your glorious song. All glory and splendor, thanks and praise are yours, O Lord, Heavenly Father. You pierced the gloomy darkness of sin and unbelief with the brilliant light of your Son. You guided the Magi to worship the Christ and revealed the mystery of your eternal plan to save both Jew and Gentile. You declared Jesus your beloved Son at the Jordan River, and with your Spirit you anointed him to be the Savior of all people. Bless our reception of your Son's body and blood, that we might shine with the joy of faith. Use this most holy sacrament to illuminate our lives and minds of Christ's forgiveness, peace, and comfort. Refresh our faith and help us to reflect his truth and grace to the world. We ask this, that you may receive endless honor, glory, and praise for every tribe and language and people and nation. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father Amen. in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. Just one announcement this morning. We do have the symbolism of the common cup, but we will not be using the common cup this morning. Take and eat. This is the body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given in his death for the forgiveness. Take drink. This is the blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take a drink. This is the blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this body which is given for you in this blood which is shed for you, help strengthen and preserve you in one true faith. Heart and peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given in his death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take drink. This is the blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. 
Savior Jesus Christ. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take drink. This is the blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
that for you. Help strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith and nourished our hope and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you'll receive us as your guest at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we next gather for worship, it will be Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. On that day, we will begin our solemn journey to the Savior's cross. While the joy of faith remains undiminished through the year, our rejoicing during Lent is muted and quiet. For centuries, therefore, Christian churches have omitted the most jubilant songs during this season, including the word Alleluia, which means praise the Lord. Now for a time we say farewell to Alleluia. We do this to prepare ourselves for the quieter days of Lent. The Alleluia's will return on Easter dawn as we gather to shout our praise to our risen Lord. We now conclude our service with our final hymn.
Good morning. Once again, you're welcome for the extra sit-down time if you didn't pick it up. Um, oh, well. The prayers went through. God heard us. Our boys were praised. Uh, even with a little humming and other things we had going on, um, God still was glorified. So, again, thank you for this opportunity this morning to lead you in worship and give Pastor a, a break, and he'll be back with our Lenten season starting with Ash Wednesday. Again, just a reminder to read... Uh, the message in the back of the bulletin about the, the ashes and something different we're going to do this year. And if you have questions, you sure can ask Pastor or I uh, anytime before that. Otherwise, the Lord's blessings on your Lenten worship as well as your day. Thank you. See 